So I came out to the garage today just to make a video about my ground station. Uh, this is my homemade tripod. The leg design here is fairly common among many tripods. You'll see uh, two bits hinged with a spacer here and the bolt goes all the way through. That's all nailed together. And then it slides down. This is only attached to the middle section and there's a piece of plywood on both sides and then a bolt running through that you can tighten to squeeze on the two legs. And then down at the bottom here you're attached to the outside legs and it just slips through. I've used this tripod quite a bit and it works quite well. Uh, I decided to use string on the bottom just to hold the legs from splaying apart. This gives you the unique ability to pivot based on your terrain. You can pivot the whole tripod and get it level. Uh, this will extend all the way down and I've done that a few times. It just gets out of reach. You almost need a ladder to get to the top. Uh, in the middle here there is a in threaded insert drilled in here and then a stop nut here just so you don't uh, go too far. And then there's a piece of half inch pipe flanged, screwed to the bottom of this. And then that runs down and then this piece here is for hanging a weight so that in high wind the, uh, the tripod doesn't tip over. And then I built this little platform that goes on top. There's a little pocket here. Uh, and I'll show you what that is for. So the way this goes together is you just take the tripod, it's the, leaving the, have the tripod set up, all you have to do is slide this inside the little notch and set it down. So once you have it set in place, you just take this little clip, which I bent out of some metal, and you just put it on here. So that way if the base spins around and it goes too far, it goes 180 degrees and the weight of the antenna switches to the other side, this will keep it from flipping out of the holder. This is what my base station looks like when it's folded up and ready for transport. When I built it I did a few things. So I left a, a reveal on the sides here to protect all of the buttons and switches and equipment. You can see the plywood extends out past the objects that are on either side and then it's set up so that it folds up and everything fits flat. I can take the antenna off if I want, but it's not really required. And everything comes off, as I showed you before, at the bottom. So you just got this little box, about nine and a half inches high and 12 inches square. I'll show you what it looks like when it's set up. So these plates just fold up to hold the antennas. I've set up so that one face is forward and one face is rear. To do this, all you do is extend the base plate and then there's some springy metal that I made in a coat hanger and it just got a couple of holes that it slips into and now that is totally solid and the whole thing moves before that thing moves. I've had this out in some pretty high wind and I haven't had any issue with it at all and as you saw before it folds up pretty flat when it's all done. One of the rails uh, just goes through here so I just dadoed a little hole in the piece of plywood and then screwed it on so that piece of wire can pivot and it comes down to the rails. You'll see one goes outside and one goes inside. And that way, if I want, I can drill more holes and get, and get different angles. Still very much in the trial phase. So I'll just overlay what the, each of the switches do. I gotta make labels for them. And I'm also gonna make a video about the video recorder. So I'm still trying this out and I'll show you what the inside looks like here in a minute. So when this is done, there's a diversity controller inside and you are going to get the two different receivers feeding the two different directions. Right now I'm just using omni and directional. And then this whole thing can pivot uh, based on the, antenna, the directional antenna controller. And uh, if I just leave it stationary, I'll set it up so that I can point to where I'm going to generally fly with the directional antenna and then I have the Omni for when I'm in close and eventually I will put a different antenna on the back and I basically make a bi-directional base station without having any moving parts. This is the inside, obviously a work in progress. Uh, when I know it works properly I will make all the cables the right length and I'll do some soldering and I'll make it good. The top just comes off with four screws. I added these two blocks of plywood here to landmark in the corners so you just put the lid on you slide it down and then the four screws go back into the holes they came from i have an eagle tree diversity 
inside. I've only had one flight with that. Wasn't terribly impressed so far. Got to mess with the white balance and a few other things. We'll try a few more flights and see how that goes. Previously I was just using a straight video splitter. Uh, but to do the diversity, obviously you need a diversity controller. So this shelf comes out. Uh, it's just sitting in here right now. I needed more real estate to put more equipment. Uh, down inside, and you can see it down in here, there are the two becks that run the... Give me 12 volts and 5 volts, and that's the bottom of the servo that does the pan. I have SD DVR, and I'm going to show some video from that. The recording quality on this is terrible, but it's great for finding the plane if it were to go down, because the grid would be on the screen. Uh, I had to support these outlets. I had a few times where these popped off, so I just put some styrofoam underneath the plugs. They're three and a half millimeter jacks, just to make sure that they don't break off. The video out from the DTR actually goes to these two ports right here, so I can run a cable over to the ground station and check on a TV or an external monitor um, if the video is recording or not. This is a 5.8 gigahertz. Uh, transmitter so it's off the splitter and it goes to my goggles so I can be wireless when I'm using it. Uh, there's two Arduinos so they're both on inside like this. So there's one here and then there's one underneath and then these two power switches run each. One of them is for the strobe to landmark when I'm flying in low light conditions so I can find the ground station and I'll show you that in a second. And then the one on the bottom is to control the there's another option for controlling the base station's pan and tilt using mission plan from the laptop and a USB connection. One of the Arduinos, and I know it's way overkill, is doing the flash on my 40 watt strobe. So there's a heat sink on the back here. I just slapped it in some plywood so I could more easily mount it on the base station and I'm still working on that now. All I did was bore a little hole in the side and then mount a female connector in the plywood. And when you fire this up, it's very, very bright. Uh, and I can change the way the different strobes work. So this goes in, on the antenna mount and can be used by the tracker. Keep that pointed at the plane all the time. And I can find that in the dark. This whole base station is built straight out of plywood. So it's a half inch box around the perimeter. And then top and bottom is eighth inch plywood that just was glued on the bottom and then screwed on the top. For access inside, I just drilled holes so that the wires could easily pass inside and outside. This gives me flexibility, so if I want to make more connections or if I want to run wires in here and make connections to the Eagle Tree or even reach the buttons from the outside, I can just go to the holes. So that's it for the overview of the ground station. Please stay tuned for part two where I cover the rest of the ground station. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos.